I now wish to provide Parliament at the first opportunity an update on our decisions relating to the future funding for Ferguson Marine. I am pleased that we have completed the assessment fully in line with the F Public Finance and Accountability Act, Scottish Public Finance Manual and Green Book. Officials have advised me that as a consequence of that due diligence that the regulatory and propriety of completing uh, vessels 801 and 802 under the existing contracts is met. I can also confirm that with respect to vessel 801, the value for money case for completing that vessel is also met. The cheapest option open to ministers is to complete 801 at Ferguson's. However, the case for vessel 802 is more challenging, and I have accepted the judgment of the Scottish Government Accountable Officer that the narrow value for money case has not been made. Having said that, in making a decision around the way forward, I am guided by a wider set of considerations relating to the original policy objectives and the impact that any decision might have on people, communities and national resilience. It is also important that I consider the impact on Ferguson Marine as well. These are not matters that can be taken into account in a pure value for money exercise, but clearly they are matters of the utmost importance. From the very start, we have been clear that our island communities deserve to be supported by two new energy efficient vessels with the capacity and reliability required to support vibrant island economies. While I accept that the pure value for money assessment concludes that it could be cheaper to re-procure a new vessel, this work also shows that doing so would result in significant further delays. A new vessel could not be deployed until at least May 2027 at the earliest, four years from now and two and a half years from the current delivery timescale. I do not consider that that is acceptable to our island communities to wait this further period. Vessel ASO 2 will provide lifeline connectivity to the mainland, ensure that people in Arran are supported for day-to-day -day needs around health, education and commercial activity, and provide a resilient service to support the tourist industry which contributes so much to the island's economy. Recent issues with the reliability of an ageing island fleet and the costs associated with hiring replacement vessels in order to maintain services have merely added to the compelling case for delivering additional capacity as quickly as possible. I am committed to supporting the workforce at Ferguson Marine and recognise the importance for jobs, skills and the opportunity for future generations that the Yard provides. More immediately, of course, the continuing delivery of vessel 802 through Ferguson Marine ensures that the local economy benefits from the company's spend on salaries, subcontractors and taxes, which support the local labour market and wider businesses in the Inverclyde area and beyond, which would be lost if we did not proceed. Finally, I remain committed to supporting a sustainable future for Ferguson's. I believe that confirming our intention to deliver Vessel 802 at the Yard provides a platform upon which future success can be built. Put simply, if Vessel 2 was not delivered at Ferguson's, then the very future of the Yard and the hundreds of jobs it supports would be in jeopardy. On the basis of the cost projections in our due diligence, I have therefore provided written authority to the Accountable Officer to secure the continued build of Vessel 802 at Ferguson's. In the light of this decision, I can also confirm the preliminary budget set out by the then Deputy First Minister for Ferguson Marine for 2023-24 to support the continued completion of Vessels 801 and 802, and I have advised the CEO of this position.